Hey guys, second part to this video here in Millican about the lights flickering. I apologize for the interruption. A lot of you guys get really upset about the why did it cut out. You know, that's just part of business. My phone rings and I've got to pick up. Anyways, guys, uh, so this is the second part of the video. Hopefully you found the video. This A-frame is a PE2003. It does really well at indicating where underground that wire can be. Um, I have a couple methods. I like to use the clamp on this guy to clamp around and try to figure that out. But this thing, you never want to hook this up when the leads are hot. Right now this is hot and this is your neutral. So you can go ahead and, and clamp your neutral there if you can, or your neutral here, and then you can clamp a wire here, or you can kill the power and then take the feeders off and make sure they're dead with your multiple meter and then clamp it and, and signal any which three, okay? You can also drive a wire over, a ground rod over here, this little rod or a bigger ground rod and then clamp to it, and that'll help indicate with a good moisture of soil. It has its limitations. It doesn't go well in cement. It doesn't do well in rock. It doesn't go well in tar at all. It has to be done with a soil. Um, so it's really good to use in a park location like we did at Berthoud Park. The other meter I love to have is going to be my PE2000 or my BLL200T. This guy is just a complete beast. It is amazing. So this guy, I just go ahead and take him, plug him in. He runs off of a couple of batteries, double A's. Plug him in, turn him on, clamp around a pole, a conduit, in that case three feeders at once, or I can hook up the leads. Now they say in the instructions you could hook it up hot. I personally think um, you need to read that instructions. Um, I like to do things dead when I'm dealing with that. For one reason, you could have a wild leg, and I've had that once on a pole light. And if I, my son actually was on the job site and he leaned against the pole and he found it and it shunted him in the shoulder. So mind you, newer codes on pole lights, they have to have ground rods in the, uh, typically inside of the column itself when they pour or next to it at least. But back then, 50 years ago, when they pull, poured little pylons for these five foot lights in some of the apartment berries, they didn't have any code on that. And this thing actually shifted underground, ripped the wire, energized the pole, and the pole was completely energized. So in that situation, I do like to turn things off. That won't really clamp a lot of poles because it's kind of small in the diameter, but it's about a four inch. It'll clamp though your feeders right there. So what I did then once I did that is I, is I clamped my feeders, I turned it on, and then I went to trace, and I went to high, and I started to indicate where's this thing gonna be at. And then I would hit my depth signal to figure out where the depth is gonna be. It won't show you depth here because I'm not doing it right now. Anyways guys, so, I, so the PE, the BLL200T is a really good tool. Um, very expensive, I, I think I dropped close to $5,500 on both of those. Um, so here's my other favorite tool. I love this tool. It cost me about a buck. And I love to just indicate the old school method of making sure I like to do three things when I trace. I like to really make sure. Four things. Five. Number one, I indicated my voltage was different. Number two, I ran another wire just to say is this, if this was above ground, would this help it? Yes, it cleaned up the voltage. Number three, I like to use the PE2003. Number four, I use my BLL200T. And number five, I just use my really expensive meter here, like you guys don't like my light bulb. And I get to indicate with some spray paint, guess what? I'm right on top of it. Common sense says it comes from there because I measured off of the side of the meter and came down put a flag common sense says i drew a straight line most electricians are really cheap like me and you don't want to run a big s curve with wire so here's the thing i like to show my boys this now the part about this that can be bad is that you can pick up cold water pipes underground especially if they're copper you can pick up a gas line you can pick up uh, sometimes even sprinkler wires and sprinkler pipe so that's why I really focus on three, four different methods to make sure I know where those wires go before I dig. Now, before I dig, I can always kill that main right there, and I can dig here, and if I hit the wire, it's not going to arc my shovel. So again, guys, use safety first. Use common sense. Uh, make sure you have gloves. Make sure you have good insulated boots. I've got insoles in here that will protect me too. This ground is moist from the gutter that's been drained. In December, this is surprising, the dirt is this soft, so it's gonna be a good dig. I'll give you a third video on what I find, 
Um, I have a couple ideas. We might retrench all this, but the, we may have to take out the sidewalk. And that means I got to rent a, a jumper jack. Um, I got to go and get um, a little mini skidster, put it on my flatbed trailer and pull it with my Duramax. So, and that's what this next step might be. But there's another thought is if I can find it, I might be able to find it. Now, one last thing is the BLL200T, uh, the one that went beep, 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 not the A-frame. That one actually indicated a weak signal as I backfed through this new wire. I was actually able to see that it started freaking out and showing 15 foot right here. But it indicated that I was at a foot and a half, two foot, three, three and a half by the time I hit that rock, three, two and a half, one foot by the time I hit over by that transformer. So evidently the land was scraped in some areas and, and, and uh, drained. But as you can see, look at all that water from the street if they get a whole, a huge downpour. Guess where it's going? Right here inside his driveway. And in fact, that's at least three quarters of an inch drop in 19 years. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully that'll help you guys out that are trying to trace something. Again, thank you for all you guys that have given me suggestions on these meters. As this year of 2018, I've been tracing. I love them. It's been a great thing. I'm hoping to get better at that as I start to dig. Um, I want to pass that knowledge on to us other electricians. But again, if you're a homeowner, yeah, don't be dumb. You're not going to want to spend your money on those kind of meters when you use it once. And if you don't know how to do it, you're really playing with fire. Because again, if that neutral's rogue and you're in the middle of it or your foot's bare out there in the grass, that's how you're going to end up being a, a part of that system getting grounded. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Bye.